links oben ist die Leonard und Julian know their way around the night skies over Berlin. When the two of them aren't busy doing their homework for high school, their eyes are directed skywards. Asteroids, especially the ones close to Earth, because they could be dangerous. But all asteroids usually move around between planets. You can see that here. There's the sun. Here you see the planets. They're all moving in this orbit. And between them, there are all the asteroids. Here on the computer, you can see our solar system. That's the Earth's orbit and the asteroids. Loads of them can pose a threat to the Earth. Julian and Lennart have been friends since the first grade. Julian was the one who started stargazing, and his friend just had to join him at some point. The hobby is time-consuming, and anything but cheap. A telescope of their own runs to around 1,500 euros. The two have been observing asteroids for a while. This is a meteorite. It's a fragment of an asteroid that struck the Earth several thousand years ago. The crater was 100 meters in diameter. This is just a tiny piece. 20 meters would be enough to destroy all of Berlin. Julian and Lennart are looking for really dangerous asteroids, ones with a diameter of several kilometers. They collect data at a Berlin observatory and send it on to the Minor Planet Center in the U.S., a central gathering place for asteroid information. Scientists there calculate asteroid orbits using observations from stargazers like Julian and Lennart. The two found the conventional way of determining positions too cumbersome and imprecise. We just took a picture of the sky. Here the stars are white points. Then we reverse the image, switch the colors so the stars are black. You take the red stars, the ones that have been cataloged, and put them on the picture and compare it, so that the fit is as close as possible. Doing it the old way, you would use all the stars here to determine the position of asteroids. We've developed a new way to eliminate the stars that don't fit so well with the others, and then determine the asteroids position again. We increased the precision of the measurement by 40 percent. We wrote a computer simulation for it. And the director of the U.S. Minor Planet Center assessed it. He was very interested and spent lots of time doing it. He normally doesn't have any time because they're always busy. And it took him about 10, 20 hours just to check our data. And he said it did get better the fewer you use. It was clear. People never used to say that. It was taboo to use fewer stars. Normally it would make the method far less precise. But with our intelligent methods, it really works. Understandably, the two teenagers are proud of their work. Satellites and even space telescopes could apply the new method to navigate more easily, precisely and quickly. But there's more to Lennart and Julian's lives than studying and stargazing. The two of them still manage to play music sometimes. <laughs> Julian wishes he had more time to practice. And Leonard is thinking of playing in a band. What they want to do for work is clear, science. But the stars in the planetarium could take on a completely new level of interest for them. Coming here with a girlfriend, for example, that would be nice, because it's sort of romantic, the starry sky, stars twinkling in the darkness. Refreshingly, these two amateur astronomers have their feet on the ground, even if their heads are in the stars.